In other videos, what I and my colleagues have attempted to do is to demonstrate how easy and yet powerful it is to be able to drag files and import files from mobile devices, for example, a GPS receiver or a file you find on the internet that contains latitude and longitude coordinates such as water wells or pH values or uh, locations of uh, historical buildings or earthquake epicenters into ArcGIS online. And so consider this video as part of that series. In this particular case, I've got a zipped shapefile. As I've done in the past with a zip shape file, I can map this, but uh, let's demonstrate how you might do this with a polygon file that contains data. For example, here, population data of 1900 to 2010 for the state of, well, I, I, I'll let you tell me what the state is. Let's go ahead and drag that file over to ArcGIS Explorer Online. Now you know what state it is. It's the state of Oklahoma. Let's go ahead and zoom in on there and see what we can do with this file. If I click on any of these counties, for example, this one, Texas County, Oklahoma, up in the panhandle, I can see the population through the decades. Why is this minus 99 here for 1900? Well, there was no data for 1900 in that county. So 1910, 14,000, 13,000, 14,000. Ooh, major dip in 1940. Why is that? Hmm, we'll take a look. Could it have something to do with the Dust Bowl? Okay, and you can see that it rebounded, uh, but it was fairly flat in growth until there was some growth in the 1990s, and then it's been a bit more flat since then. What about other counties? What kind of patterns might they show? Okay, let's take a look at Grady County. 30,000 went up to 33. Oh, also a dip in the 1930s. Hmm, I wonder how pervasive that dip in the 1930s was. We had another uh, issue here where we've got a slight decrease in the 1960s in Grady County, but then increasing since, since 1970. Okay, well, that illustrates that we've got a map here, which is the G part of GIS, but we also have an information database behind every one of these polygons, which is, you can think of it as the I part of GIS, or the information part. Okay, super. What does that mean? Hmm, that means we can more easily map this inside ArcGIS Online for further analysis. Let's demonstrate that. Let's go ahead and change the symbology now of that data. Under display here, there's a configure. Right now I've got it mapped as, as the same symbol for every county. And I really don't want that because I want to look at the population by county. So I'm going to go ahead and change it from single symbol to something else. Okay, so instead of single symbol, let's go ahead and say classify using color. If I go to classify using color, I see that I've got several attributes here. Ooh, let's go ahead and map the 2010 population data. And let's map it based on, how about quantile? So we get the same number of observations in every class. Great. I'll say done. And I'll go ahead and change the scale so that I'm looking at Ah, so I start seeing patterns right away. Be nice to have a map legend there. Let's go ahead and pop that map legend up. Okay, excellent. So what have we done? We've dragged over a zipped shapefile into ArcGIS Explorer Online. Then we clicked on different counties to get their attributes. In this case, population. Now what we've done is, the third thing is we've actually change the legend to be able to make these thematic maps. And remember, think beyond the particular data set that we're looking at here. If you've got any sort of data and you've got it, uh, attributes and you want to map it based on some sort of a classification method, you've got a really powerful uh, toolkit right now at your fingertips. So right now I can see some population distribution around Oklahoma. I can see the Oklahoma City, uh, central Oklahoma being fairly populous uh, versus out here on the, on the western plains and then the panhandle. Great.